Soba Asami has never had it easy. She lives in a 10 or 15 square meter corrugated iron hut with her husband and son near Kathmandu. Every now and then she works as a day laborer at construction sites or in the fields, earning the equivalent of three or four euros. But she sees no need to complain and says she's happy. The only thing that really bothers her is discrimination. As a Dalit woman, I face many problems living here. I'm a day laborer. When I work for someone in an upper caste house, they usually don't give me food. I have to go to a cafe. At the cafe, they ask me to eat my meal outside and rinse off my dishes myself. Dalits are traditionally considered impure. In the caste system, they're the lowest of the low. That often means being denied access to education and jobs, and above all, a lack of respect. The centuries-old caste system is rooted in Hinduism. Many believe that their own fate is determined by destiny, and with good karma, their soul might be reborn into a higher caste. Many Nepalese are deeply religious, especially in rural areas, high in the Himalayan mountains. The village of Raviopi is a two-hour drive from Kathmandu. Its slopes are steep, the soil is dry, and now the monsoon season is about to begin. Bimala Tolanje belongs to the Mija caste, the mountain Dalits. She faces even more hurdles. Due to a lack of well-paid jobs, her husband has left the country. Now he works in Malaysia's oil industry, but Bimala doesn't know exactly what he does. Last summer, he left for at least three years. He's never seen their young daughter. It would be so much better if my husband could stay here in Nepal, if he'd found a job in farming or some other kind of job. He would be a helping hand. He could take the children to school or help when someone is sick. But we have no choice. Thanks to her husband's earnings, Bimala Tolanje has some livestock. Her house is larger than some of the others here. She used to mainly tend to the household and work from time to time as a day laborer. But then her life took an unexpected turn. The International Climate Protection and Development Organization, ISIMOD, began providing agricultural training to women in the region, giving priority to those whose husbands have left to find work. A project coordinator from a local NGO pays regular visits. Today, he's showing the women the correct way to plant tomatoes. We gather them in an area where we practically teach how to grow the plants or how they can change the um, you know, chemical pesticides to the biopesticides. So it's not about teaching them, it's about demo organizing demonstration plots, practical training, organizing field schools. So this is how we are training these ones. Before, I wasn't all that interested in agriculture. And I only use traditional farming methods, which don't provide much income. After the first people left to find work, the ones left behind just sat idle. But now we understand agriculture and we can put our time to good use. For many local Dalits, the program has been a boon. The district administration believes that giving opportunities to the lowest caste is long overdue. The caste system in Nepal follows a centuries-old philosophy. It divides society into four castes, with Dalits at the bottom. Dalits have long been part of our labor force, supporting development and improving society. Now our society is undergoing very rapid change. It's becoming more inclusive. This old caste-based way of thinking will be eradicated very soon. Dalits aren't so optimistic. They fear the long-standing discrimination they face won't change any time soon. Yet many Nepalese, especially the younger generation, dream of a country without a caste system. 
The village of Culture Besi, where Isimod has launched its training program, shows what this future might look like. The local women, many of them Dalits, have joined forces. Their farming operation is thriving. They've invented a new kind of organic fertilizer made of plants, cow dung, microorganisms and water, which they spray on their fields. These cucumbers and pumpkins are grown organically, the women tell us. Every few days, traders come by to pick up the vegetables and then sell them at markets. The project originally aimed to prepare local women for the impact of climate change, including drought and erosion. But the women soon took charge themselves, ignoring caste distinctions in the process. Nand Kisho Agrawal helped get the project off the ground. We tried to work with the people to find out what is the simple thing which they can do themselves to, to improve their conditions, to improve their, uh, say, livelihood or to, to manage the change. Uh, at that time, we did not even imagine that it will go to the extent that it will really spread and people will themselves uh, start doing a lot of things. Soba Asami from the suburb of Kathmandu has also taken matters into her own hands. She's building a larger house. Progress is slow because she always has to save up the money for the next step. But she's patient and determined. And she's no longer willing to accept discrimination for being a Dalit. People don't understand. We're all the same. They think I'm weak, but I'm not. I'm strong enough to fight being treated like that. If some in the community don't want to see it that way, that's their problem. I don't want to be treated like I'm inferior to others. I'll fight that, however long it takes. For Soba Asami and others, it's a fight for dignity and respect, and a future in which Nepal is finally free of its caste system.